Now we're going to go to Rosa Borch, Borch, and she's from Malta. She's a poet and activist. And thank you so much for coming, uh, Rosa. You're the first woman that we've heard from uh, from Malta. And as many, many people know, Malta is at the forefront of the transgender ideology and movement. So um, my first question for you, um, Rosa, is when and how was legal self-ID of gender enacted in your country? Which groups pushed it forward and were any alternatives proposed? As you know, we haven't uh, much chance to present opposing views to what is going on, so I really appreciate this as well. Uh, Malta is an extremely polarized country politically. We're bipartisan, basically. And uh, after the elections of 2013, in April 2014, gender identity became a protected category in our constitution. Thanks to the Gender Identity and Gender Expression and Sex Characteristics Act of 2015, people can change their gender identity without having surgery or hormones or even proving that they've been living as the opposite sex. They, they just sign a declaration and a note of registration in front of a notary. And uh, that's it, basically. Those under 16 require parental consent. The newly elected party in government, uh, the Labour Party, which came into power in 2013, was the main uh, one who was instrumental in pushing this forward. And it did so with the complicity of state captured LGBTQI, the whole alphabet soup organizations. Since this was enacted at around the same time as the Civil Unions Act of 2014, the objections mainly made by the Catholic Church and more conservative elements focused on civil unions and especially on adoption by same-sex couples rather than this. So they paused it when we weren't looking, basically. The second question is, what effects have self-ID had on women's and girls' rights and spaces, etc.? Well, women's spaces are now basically open to anyone who calls himself a woman. Uh, with regards to politics, we're seeing uh, the first uh, trans identified, or rather, because I'm trying to stop using the, that phrase, uh, those who have had surgery or hormones and think they are women, they're contesting local elections and MEP elections. But uh, in the meantime, Hate and violence against women is rife. Um, Maltese investigative journalist Daphne Caruana Galizia was assassinated in 2017. First, they tried to shut her up in more conventional ways, basically, then they blew her up in a car bomb. Activists calling for justice. We've been doxxed verbally and physically attacked, harassed. Uh, a government consultant compared protesters for justice to prostitutes. A female MP was threatened by another MP who said he'd come for her, and this was in parliament. He said he'd come for her and split her open. And he was subsequently given a medal. Um, out of 67 MPs, only nine of them are women, which is not surprising given the circumstances. And both MPs from both sides of the house, they're uh, criticized on the base of their sex rather than, you know, what their work and what they're doing. Meanwhile, abortion remains illegal. Uh, the pay gap between men and women is still about 15% per month. Recently, we had a government spokesperson who called for women who are popular and not pretentious to contest elections and thus solve this imbalance between men and women in parliament. The proposed gender quotas bill, which is supposed to address this issue as excludes third parties, which means that those who don't have the financial backing of the two main parties won't make it irrespective of quotas and their sex and whatever. Uh, the latest Grievio report also shows that there is a lot to be done 
even though on paper it looks good, there's a lot to be done to, in, to address gender violence. And we've also seen a surge of hate uh, crimes with regards to uh, men who identify as women. So it really doesn't benefit anyone, not even those that it's supposed to benefit and especially not women. Lesbian and bisexual women are particularly vulnerable to this, both because of the amount of young girls who are being encouraged to have surgery or take hormones and, and other drugs who then turn out to be either lesbian or bi. And also because the organizations which are supposed to represent us are mainly focusing on trans and intersex rights. They're parroting Stonewall and uh, similar organizations. It's all about the T, basically. What's happened about national statistics since gender self-ID in Malta? Well, as far as we can tell, uh, the number of women using the services of the gender clinic, there's basically one gender clinic in the main hospital. So it takes referrals from all over Malta. Uh, as far as we know, the number of young women being referred is four times as, as much as quadrupled. I say as far as we know, because the availability of statistics is not good, it's sporadic. Uh, last year's statistics, they still haven't been published in full, but I'm not holding my breath about it because from what I've heard from people who regret taking so, sur, uh, having surgery and taking hormones, like they were referred after two appointments and um, a couple of emails. I think we're in for a shock that, that there's a, a lot of young women who are going through this. Who opposes self-ID in your country, um, uh, Rosa? And have any of these groups surfaced recently? So have you got new groups forming or have you got old groups that oppose self-ID, if any? Mainly it's the, conf the more conservative elements who are opposing self and the idea and objecting. It's, it, in Malta, misgendering is a hate crime. It's, uh, you can be fined and taken to court and uh, prison for it. So most people are afraid to speak up. And also there are people for whom it's not financially convenient to, to speak up. The latest law, which allows parents to leave their sent the children's sex undeclared on their birth certificate mixes up sex and gender. And this seems to have waken up at least members of the opposition who have objected to this, which is really good to see, even though they're conservative, it's like at least somebody is, is realizing what is happening and they're starting to pay more attention. There are also people who regret taking surgery and hormones and they're starting to speak up as well. Um, one of them was threatened with a court case just because she, she said that sex cannot change. And unfortunately, there are also a few extremists who are not against gender ID specifically, but against the whole LGB community who, who are homophobic, basically. Most feminists here are dealing with other issues. Abortion is illegal, so you have uh, a lot of young women who are trying to get an abortion law passed. And there's also a lot of good work being done with regards to domestic violence. So there's, there isn't really so much opposition to this. What about children? What's happening with children and young people in schools? Are they being encouraged to transition? Yes, they're being indoctrinated from a very young age. Um, the focus is on identity, on how you feel, on rather than sex and sexual orientation. It's prevalent right through from primary school to so-called inclusive language at university level, even with migrants. And it's being pushed by, uh, of course, it's a state policy, but it's also being pushed by LGBTQI organizations. Uh, one issue of concern is the newly proposed EU equality strategy, which does have some good points with regards to, for example, disabled women and migrant women, but it also focuses on gender rather than sex. For example, it speaks of same gender couples rather than same sex couples. It's about the erasure of sex. And it's worrying because 
previously, we've been able to appeal any local decisions on an EU level. And now we won't be able to do that. If there's a decision taken in court, we won't be able to appeal that. And I also find it very difficult to imagine how, you know, we're going, we're going to decriminalize prostitution. How can a strategy which is supposed to improve women's rights be effective in a country which is decriminalizing prostitution? It doesn't make sense. What peak trends do you? I don't think there was a specific issue. It was gradual. I had been reading about this, you know, and watching from the sidelines, educating myself as they tell us to do. And what finally peaked trans me was the language, the misogyny and the violent hatred, especially given what we have already been through here as a country with Daphne Caruana Galizia and everything. Uh, you know, the, the, the hatred that we see direct towards women for speaking the truth, for saying that sex is real, for simply stating, for example, that only women have a cervix. Since then, it's been a whole series of big trans movements. Um, from seeing lesbians being told they're transphobic just for being exclusively attracted to women and that they must include men, seeing mothers being referred to as pregnant people, little boys, being told they're girls because they like glitter and they like pink, learning about trans widows and how they make a parody of us, of women, uh, about how rape survivors do not have a right to choose female healthcare professionals because goodness forbid we stop centering men. We've had, uh, recently we've had a so-called feminist library which excludes women who voice their concerns about women's rights. Politicians, celebrities, and even certain feminists who believe that there are natal women and women, when in truth we know that there's just women and we are not a subset of our sex. There's allies who then say that there is no debate, so-called allies, and all in the meantime, there are women and young people who are being butchered and becoming dependent on pharmaceuticals for life. It does not stop and we won't stop either.